What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing your song. I will try not to sing out. I guess paradise is a relative kind of word. Turn that noise down! That noise disgusts me harder than the whole world! Yeah, and I'm the best cook in the world! Now turn that down before you cause us all brain damage! You know, Mom, I listen to you. I want to listen to my music. I told you to turn it down, now turn it down! I know what she told me, Kat, and I'm the same thing! You want to listen to me? My sister... That sweet little blonde-haired angel had turned into something stranger to my parents than an alien from space. The only thing they agreed on was that the best form of communication was yelling at the top of their lungs. And that the best form of listening was also yelling at the top of their lungs. Values. Literature very often is about a conflict of... Values. Now, where do we get our values? Winnie. From school? Anywhere else? Kevin. From our parents. Yes, okay. Very good, Kevin. Parents. Anywhere else? The Beatles? <laughs> yes, that is very good. We do get a lot of our tastes and our values from our cultural heroes. Now, is there anywhere else that we might get our values? Hmm? TV. How about books? Oh, oh books. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. do we always agree on, on what values should be? That was Joey Santano. He'd always wait for Miss White to ask a really easy rhetorical question. Yes. And then he'd get it wrong. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Pfeiffer. No. Good. Now, do values change through time? Say, from generation to generation. Christine Hansen. She always gave these thoughtful, complete, downright inspired answers. She made us all sick, but teachers loved her. Yes, Miss White. Some values change from generation to generation. But I think the really important ones are the heartfelt human values. And they stay the same throughout the ages. It's very good, Christine. Okay. What a pain in the ass. Okay. Now, as we read, as we evaluate those characters that we meet, how do we know which values should change and which values are, as Christine so eloquently put it, heartfelt and timeless? That was a tough question at any time. But in 1968... Yes, Christine. 
Can I go to the bathroom? In 1968, even Christine Hansen couldn't answer that one. The answer is blowing in the wind. How many roads must have been? And yet, in 1968, maybe more than ever, the question kept coming up. Take that whole incident with my sister Karen and Lewis. For two weeks, all we heard about was Lewis says this and Lewis says that. And then one day, we all got to meet him. This was Lewis. He was a junior at the State University, an honor student in political philosophy, active in student government and various non-profit social causes. But I didn't know that. All I knew was that he was on my sister like mold on cheese. Wow. Paul, she's my sister! So what? She's not my sister. For all Karen's rebelliousness and independence, or maybe because of it, I couldn't help feeling she needed my protection. Go out. what it was about Lewis that I didn't like. I guess there was something about him I didn't understand. Something that was taking my sister away from us. Get out of here. Leave my wife alone. college and it being a weeknight and my parents I mean it's just gonna be such a hassle well I know a few Vietnamese peasants who probably feel that it's worth the hassle come here you oh I think I can watch not tonight okay mm. I see okay yeah sure can I make a phone call sure Stupid thing down? I was here first. It's okay, Karen. I sort of like watching these old fascist films. They're like parodies of themselves by now. Hi, it's me. Yeah, sure, I had fun, Marissa. Marissa? Did he say he had fun with Marissa? Listen, uh, tonight, 7.30, we're marching from Jenkins Hall to the administration building and... What? Of course you can crash at my place. And that she could crash at his place? Okay, good. I love you too. And that he loved her? No, no, no. I, I couldn't I'm, believe I'm, it. What a sicko. It wasn't enough that this guy was all over my sister like a fungus in a damp basement. No, he was a multi-basement kind of guy. I was outraged. Okay, so I'll pick you up at seven. Bye-bye. Lewis? I'm gonna have to ask you to step outside. What do you mean? I'm on to you, Lewis. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Take that, you low down snake belly lily liver weirdo. <gasps> Sorry, sis. She was no good. <laughs> oh, Kevin, I'm so glad I have a brother like you. I'm going to make your bed for you from now on. Can I help you? Who's Marissa? A friend. What kind of friend? Are you asking if she's my lover? Ugh. Did he have to use that word? You must be Kevin, huh? 
You must have heard me talking on the phone with Marissa. You want to punch me? Do something violent? Kevin, your your sister and I, we love each other, but it's a, it's an open and a trusting love. We don't own one another like a farmer owns a cow. You understand that? Yeah. You're saying if it weren't for cattle rustling laws, you'd have cows sleeping over at your place, too. Kevin, I can share love with your sister, and she can share love with me. That doesn't mean I can't share love with Marissa, too. Sounded like a lot of sharing to me. I had a hunch everybody was getting pretty small portions. Does Karen know about this? Louis, is he bugging you? Kevin, do you think that maybe you could play somewhere else? Oh, Karen, he's fine. We were just talking about relationships. I uh, talked to Marissa. She can make it tonight. Oh, good. That makes me feel a little less guilty. She really did know about Marissa. Okay, now I was officially confused. I felt like I had to take action, to make a stand, to do something. But I had no idea what. Kevin... Are you just going to stand there? Yes. I watched Lewis and my sister make out for about 20 minutes. After a while, I started feeling like a third wheel. Fortunately, my subconscious had a plan. Lewis is here. Oh? Yeah, he's in the living room with Karen. Hmm. Well, don't you want to meet him? I'm sure if your sister wants me to meet Lois, she'll introduce him. I don't want to interfere in her life. Oh, really? Would it help you to know that this guy's screwing around with half the state university system? What's he like? Bingo. Disturbing. What? Kevin, what kind of a word is that for you to use? I don't know. What does that mean? Disturbing. Kevin, what does that mean? Hey, don't get mad at me. <laughs> if I couldn't stop this guy myself, I could at least get the troops fired up. <laughs> mom, this is Lewis. This is my mom. Well, hi, Lewis. It's nice to meet you. Mom, do we have any carrots? Yes, honey, we have carrots, but I thought it might be nice if I said hello to your... Friend. It's really nice to meet you. So, uh, I'm making dinner now, Louis. There's plenty of chicken if you'd like to stay. That's very nice of you, but actually, I'm. Louis doesn't eat meat, Mom. <laughs> it's no big deal. I just have some qualms about the way livestock's raised, that's all. Sure, sleeping with it's no problem, but eating it. Well, you're more than welcome to stay and fill up on salad and vegetables if you like. Well, thanks. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll take you up on that. You don't eat any meat? No, I really don't. Ha. <laughs> My mother was going to expose this guy for the weirdo he was. So, Mrs. Arnold, what do you do? I beg your pardon? I mean, you know, for a living. Oh, of course, right. For a living. Nothing. I mean, I'm a housewife. Oh, that's, that's certainly not nothing. No, you're right about that. God knows it's demanding at times. I bet. You find it fulfilling? Fulfilling? <laughs> Who the hell did this guy think he was? Asking my mother if her life was fulfilling? I guess I've never really thought about that. <laughs> Maybe you should, Mom. Yikes. Did you go to college, Mrs. Arnold? Oh, yes, I was a history major in college. But I met Karen's father in my freshman year, so I, I never finished. You regret not finishing? Oh, 
no. <laughs> wow, that's great. I mean, a lot of women find it demeaning spending their lives serving their husbands and children. Okay, look out. Mom is gonna nail this guy now. <gasps> oh my God! Oh, I am so sorry. Oh, and you're being a vegetarian and everything. I'm sorry. I am such a klutz. I couldn't believe it. Why was she apologizing to him? My mom likes serving us. This Lewis guy is a major butthead. Okay, historically Wayne was not the guy I turned to in times of crisis. But bottom line, the Wainer was my brother, and when it came to protecting our kinfolk, I knew we stood as one. So he's a butthead. It's just Karen. So he said stuff to mom. So? And he's a radical. You know, like at college. So? And he and Karen are lovers. And I'm not sure if Karen knows about this, but he's got another lover named Marissa. Whoa! Two lovers? You know, I bet they do it in the microbus. I mean, I swear I saw rocking back and forth before. You know what we could do? We could drill a hole in it and set up a camera. You know, I bet sometimes when he's doing it with Karen, he shouts, "Oh God, Marissa! Oh God! Oh God, Marissa!" Well, there was one more hope. Hi, Lewis. Nice to meet you. And it was no small hope. It was Dad, the Maginot Line of Family Resistance. Things were going to be okay. Dad would take care of this guy. Now the Arnold men would stand together. Oh God, Marissa, Marissa. Well, some of the Arnold men. No chicken. Lewis doesn't eat meat, Dad. Hey, just thought I'd mention it. No meat, Lewis. No. Meat, uh, meat just doesn't turn me on, really. Yeah, that's not what I heard, pal. <laughs> no meat, huh? Imagine that. I knew it. Dad would carve through this guy like a butcher carves through a pork loin. Oh, I heard, honey, why the Vanderers didn't go to Brian's funeral. They were in Chicago. Dick's mother had a stroke. One of the boys on our block was killed in Vietnam several weeks ago. Oh, I, I know. I mean,、uh, Karen told me another meaningless death. I beg your pardon. I I just meant that it's such a shame、uh, a kid has to die for basically no reason. Were broccoli anyone? I don't think it's meaningless when a young man dies for freedom and for his country. I just have a little trouble. Justifying dying for a government that systematically represses its citizens. Oh, honey, try the potatoes. I put grated cheese on them. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means、no. that the United States government is responsible for the oppression of blacks, women, free speech. Well, perhaps, little lady, you'd like to live in Russia for a while, huh? Oh, I, I think what Karen's saying is that. Look,、uh, Buster. I happen to believe that freedom and democracy have certain advantages that communist dictatorships don't, and that is what Vietnam is all about. No man, that's what they brainwash you to believe it's all about. They, they turn people into brainwashed morons. My hunch was that my father would not let being called a brainwashed moron at his dinner table go by unremarked. So, you think I've been brainwashed, do you, Lewis? No, no. Look, I think anyone who supports the American war effort in Vietnam is having the wool pulled over his eyes. I see. Just like they did with Korea. The hell do you know about Korea? I was in Korea. I lost a lot of good friends there. Daddy, that doesn't have anything to do with what we're saying. And they weren't brainwashed. They were brave men who weren't afraid to fight for what they believed in. Now, if you're afraid to fight, why don't you just say so? Why don't you just admit that you're chicken? You're damn right. I am chicken. I don't want to die like your friends. What do you think that you achieved over there? Hmm. Do you think that those people are free? They're not free, man. Except to buy Coca-Cola and、uh, Nestle's Quick, get loans from Chase Manhattan Bank. That's crap. You were used, man, and your friends were used. That's crap. Daddy, you never listen to what we say. Some of what we say is true. Don't accept all this death and then justify it. It is wrong. Your friends should be alive. They should be enjoying dinner and arguing with their kids, just like you are. What do you know about it? Who the hell are you to say that? 
You see this man? This is my draft notice. In two weeks, I can go to jail. I can go to Canada. Or I can go get shot full of holes like your friend Brian Cooper. You keep thinking the way you do, Mr. Arnold. And these two will be next. And I just hope that's what they want. Excuse me. And so, after all, Karen left with Lewis. And Dad and Mom and I were left with our thoughts. Can I have her potatoes? And Wayne was left with himself. <laughs> 